Yeah, so I'm really excited to be here, and I'm also really excited that there are students here um, because I spend a lot of my time with students, and it's nice to um, be able to share this story and, and what we do and, and our approach with a very sort of diverse audience. And so um, thank you so much to the new schools and, and all the sponsors for having me here. Um, so as the opening keynote, I thought, you know, I'm not very good at imparting wisdom, so instead I would just sort of tell this story um, of, of what, what I do and um, what we're working on in Bertie, which I hope will be um, a good sort of inspiring way to set up the rest of the conference to think to think about STEM, to think about uh, how integrated it is into to so many parts of our lives and how we can continue to improve upon um, our approaches to STEM. Um, so as Mary Linda introduced me, um, I, oh, I'm sorry, let me get my mouse in order. Um, I'm the founder of a nonprofit called Project H Design, and I should say I'm sort of an, an accidental educator. I'm trained in architecture, and I, and I came to this world of public education completely by accident. Um, I studied architecture in both my undergrad and graduate programs and got into design and architecture, I think for a lot of, I mean, for, for the STE and the M, I, I really believe that design can be a wonderful way of solving problems. And I'm sure many of you have um, heard the term design thinking, which is becoming a very, um, a, a great process for education where we're talking about iteration and, and failing and, and problem solving and all these really wonderful creative and non-linear approaches to how we look at, at problems. Um, so Project H was a result after I, I went to graduate school and, um, and graduated with like $80,000 in student loans and realized I should probably get a job and start paying those off. I think now I'm down to like $78,000. Um, they really get you with the interest. But um, yeah, so I worked in the profession for about six years and and the whole time just felt very disenchanted with, with how disconnected my role as an architect or a designer was from um, problems that, that mattered to me. I wanted to feel like my, my role as an architect, um, as a designer, had some sort of uh, social relevance, that I was contributing to something. And I didn't feel that I had that. So I founded Project H uh, with no business plan. I was 26 years old. This is four years ago. Um, 26 years old, I was living with my parents. I had $1,000 in my savings account. Um, this is like the worst possible conditions under which to start a nonprofit. But for me, it was a, a way to say, you know what, I, I, I don't know how to do the kind of work that I want to do, but I really want to put a stake in the ground and figure out how to do it and get back to the reasons that I got into design in the first place. So fast forward to uh, 2010, we were based in San Francisco at the time. My partner, Matthew Miller, who's teaching our Studio H course right now and otherwise would be here with me. Um, he and I moved to Bertie County and we were in San Francisco and moved to Bertie County, which are two very different places. Um, if you don't know Bertie, I know they're <laughs> like very, very different. Um, in a really wonderful way though, I should say. I mean, I, I think that this is where design has a lot of opportunity to, to bridge a lot of cultural gaps. And, and so we moved to Bertie County, which I know there are some people from, some folks from Bertie here. Um, if you don't know the region, I mean, it, the northeastern part of the state, Bertie is about two hours east of here and um, is, a, is a really wonderful place, but not without its challenges. It's a mostly agricultural economy. Um, the downtown, uh, the county seat, which is Windsor, is recovering from two floods, and a lot of the buildings are, are not in use. And so there's, there are some big economic and social hurdles, but at the same time, I think that makes it a wonderful place of opportunity for, for myself, selfishly, but more specifically for, for students to be engaged in their community and to see opportunities for progress. Okay, so you're wondering why did we move there from San Francisco. Um, in February of 2009, I got an email from, a total cold call email from this man. This is um, Dr. Chip Zollinger. He's the former superintendent of the Bertie County Schools. And he sent me this email and, um, and it said something like, uh, I'm the superintendent of a, a school district in Northeastern North Carolina. I saw your work published in Dwell Magazine, and I'm thinking, what kind of superintendent reads design magazines? But, but that's great. This is the kind of guy I'd love to work with. So um, we quickly discovered that we were kindred spirits in a way, and that he really saw design and creativity as an untapped resource for the school district, um, both at, at sort of a strategic administrative level, but also within the actual classrooms. <laughs>
Uh, okay, hello. All right, let's keep Joseph, sorry. All right, so as I was saying, um, Dr. Chip Zollinger, right, so we had found this total kindred spirit in, in a really unexpected place and started working with him initially on this massive laundry list of projects that he had in his back pocket and wanted us to work on. Um, so the project that he had seen in Dwell Magazine uh, that caught his eye, that was uh, the first partnership that we worked with him on was, this is called the Learning Landscape. It's a, an educational playground system. You can build it in a day for free if you can find the materials. Luckily, a lot of school districts have school bus depots and a lot of tires that they are dying to get rid of. And so this, this playground is a really simple um, construction. It's just 25 tires in a matrix. And we wrote all these games so that students could play um, in a competitive and fun way, running around screaming and being kids, but also secretly learning math um, or vocabulary or social studies or um, foreign language translation. So this was an approach to, to education that was based more on activity and um, working together as a team. And so we built one of these at, at each of the elementary schools in Bertie. This was project number one. And then, and then came this laundry list that, that he wanted us to work on. Um, we did these computer lab renovations for the school, looking at how we could improve the computer lab facilities, which were, for the most part, being used uh, for benchmark testing. And so we wanted to ma maintain the functionality of these rooms as testing centers, but also create a more collaborative environment and with a little bit of a cool factor so that, that students would, would want to be in the space and, and work together. And um, functionally, we fed all of the power and ethernet down through these sort of tree trunk things. So it was a rat's nest free um, computer lab. And then a similar, this is actually at the STEM school in, um, in Bertie. This is a, another computer lab that's more optimized for instruction. So there's a very distinct front to this room. But similarly, all of the power is running down the walls on those chases and then out along the front um, of the desk. So yes, there's a little bit of aesthetic flair, but it's also a very functional solution. Um, and then one other really quick project, we did this, this graphic campaign. Oh, my mic's back on, it's magical. All right, so now you can hear me extra well. Um, this is a graphic campaign that we did for the whole county to advertise um, a, ca a campaign for free broadband internet access for families that were in the school district. And this was a, I had a graphic designer friend tell me once that a, a befuddled audience is a captive audience. And so on a random Sunday, we painted this blue dot up on the side of a building with very little explanation as to what it was. And it became this great conversation starter. Like, who are those crazy people up on the lift painting a blue dot? A lot of people thought it was a UNC logo before we put the text on there because um, of the shade of blue. but. Uh, you know, we wanted this to be a, a, a point of conversation where people were asking questions. We weren't giving them all the information, but we wanted to start a conversation with the community. Okay, so we had done these projects, and at this point, um, Matt and I both realized, you know, we have found this amazing partner in Dr. Z. We really like being in and working in Bertie County, but there was this logical conclusion that we were dancing around that if we really want to talk about design and public education, it has to be in the classroom. And so we figured, let's become high school teachers and teach a course around design and teach and try to teach everything through design science technology engineering math social studies history communication there's so many things that you can feed through the design process and so as we started developing this curriculum we were talking to parents and students and um, and other teachers and people around the community and there are these four c's i realized that you all probably know this, there are, there's another set of four C's that people talk about, and I didn't know that at the time, but many of these are similar. So citizenship, creativity, capital, capital, and critical thinking. These are four things that we kept hearing from a number of people, that these are four skills that the students need in order to be successful as young adults, but also things within the community that the community needs in order to survive. Um, economically, socially, these are four assets for community development as well. So if we could do both all through the umbrella of this course, it would be beneficial for our students and also for the community. So the structure of the uh, curriculum that we wrote, which, which is called Studio H, this is a very sort of rough schedule, uh, but we wrote this as a one-year program for juniors in the Bertie Early College High School. And so we have our students for the fall and the spring. This is um, last year. We've actually gone to a one-semester program now. But initially, it was two full semesters. 
and then a summer program where over the course of the academic year we would spend the year designing a full-scale architectural project and then spend the summer building it. So over the course of the, the year we had our students for three hours every day. Um, they were earning high school elective credit as well as college credits. They earned 17 college credits over the course of the school year. Um, thanks in part to a, a wonderful partnership with Pitt Community College. And then over the summer they would be paid a summer wage to be our construction crew, um, which posed a whole set of um, liability issues that I would later discover. Um, but the, their wages were paid, paid for uh, by a really generous grant that we got. This entire program is 100% is, is uh, grant funded as of now. Okay, so we wrote this program.